Civil defense officials are urging you to take cover. Please stay indoors with your windows closed. In March of 1979, Americans awoke to a nuclear nightmare. The potential is there for the ultimate risk of a meltdown at the Three Mile Island atomic power plant outside Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. In the worst case, a massive amount of radioactive material would be spewed into an area five to 10 miles in diameter and 20 miles downwind. The president tried to quell the panic. The president's trip here was a dramatic gesture. Within the next few days, important decisions will be made. But the accident had fundamentally changed the nuclear power industry. What we have to do is to call for an end to the nuclear age in its entirety. Now, more than three decades after Three Mile Island cast a shadow on the atomic dream, is America again ready to embrace the promise of nuclear power? Well, if we don't have nuclear, it's going to be a much hotter planet. One morning, Nuclear Regulatory Commissioner Viktor Galinsky received some startling news. Mysteriously high radiation and pressure readings were coming from a new nuclear reactor at Three Mile Island. The technical experts tell you there's got to be something wrong with the meters. Got to be not working properly. Well, it turned out the meters were right. An accident at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant, which is located on an island in the Susquehanna River, 10 miles from Harrisburg. The cooling system broke down this morning. Some radioactive steam escaped into the air. Radiation was detected a mile away from the plant. The plant's controlled nuclear reaction was supposed to create steam that spun a turbine generating electricity. But on this day, a sudden cascade of problems left the reactor's operators scrambling to regain control. Some officials began to fear the worst, molten uranium melting through the bottom of the reactor, what scientists had dubbed the China Syndrome, as if the fuel could melt through to the other side of the world. A new blockbuster movie had already primed the public for such a catastrophe. The China Syndrome. Only a handful of people know what it really means. And they're scared. As federal regulators and the plant's operator, Metropolitan Edison, struggled to stabilize the overheated reactor, they were confronted with a new worry, a potentially explosive hydrogen bubble that had formed near the top of the reactor core. It prevents the use of the reactor's ultimate safety system, increasing the risk of a meltdown. And if the bubble bursts, then what? There was a tremendous scare that the reactor could just blow up. The simplest solution, having a man open the valve to release the trapped gas is impossible. Heat and radioactivity would kill anyone making that attempt. Galinsky still can't believe one of the ideas floated. It was suggested to my amazement and horror that we send in terminal cancer patients. I remember the, the very distinct feeling that senior people are giving you advice that which if you took would send you right off the cliff. The idea of the men in white lab coats we're supposed to know, and they're standing there scratching their heads. That, I think, shook the public. I don't know why we need to, we need to, to tell you each and everything that, that, that we do. It's a lot worse than what they're telling us. Typical lies. They had to close all those nuclear power plants down. They've heard so much contradictory technical jargon from officials that the first casualty of this accident may have been trust. On the third day, High radiation readings off a controlled release of gases from the plant caused the governor to call for an evacuation of pregnant women and children. I am advising those who may be particularly susceptible to the effects of any radiation to leave the area within a five-mile radius of the Three Mile Island facility. Three Mile Island was not the future that was envisioned when nuclear power emerged decades earlier as an alternative to coal-fired electricity. Here before us is a tremendous potential. Let's think for a moment about the possibilities of the future. Tomorrowland, promise of things to come. Here with my right hand, I give you the magic fire of the atom. Here, in fact, is the answer to a dream as old as man himself, a giant of limitless power at man's command. The complex of images around nuclear power is quite unique. 
There's nothing outside religious imagery that is so strong, so pervasive, and involves so many hooks. Nuclear energy isn't waiting to help people everywhere in some brave new world of the future. The peaceful atom is here and now. Nuclear scientists had all kinds of visions of the new society. Energy would be practically free. We'd have nuclear-powered flying cars. The deserts would be conquered. We'd build cities in the Arctic wastes. It was an explosion of wonderful ideas about how things could be improved. All of this had been part of a concerted effort following World War II to dull the image of the atom as a tool for war. Yes, this is atomic energy at work. Not as a force for evil, but as a force for good. Just think of all the things that could be done. The pitch worked. Increasingly powerful reactors, like those at Three Mile Island, were scaled up quickly, with regulators telling the public that nuclear power's safety was assured. The plant is operated by highly trained people who are assisted in their efforts by the most sophisticated technologies available. They really believed that major accidents were essentially impossible. Three Mile Island proved that nuclear power's experts were wrong. What are the dreams? About Three Mile Island. People start moving out and there starts some lots of traffic and then all of a sudden it blew up. Twelve days after the sirens of Three Mile Island turned the communities around the plant into ghost towns, all public advisories were finally rescinded and the 140,000 people who had fled were told to return home. It was only realized how severe it was five years later when they opened up the reactor and discovered half the fuel had melted, which went way beyond anything that anyone imagined before. No one died at Three Mile Island, and in the end, it was never proven that the radiation releases created any lasting harm. Some of the fears, like the hydrogen bubble, were later shown to have been unfounded. But the meltdown itself could have been much worse were it not for several timely discoveries, including technicians realizing that a crucial pressure valve had stuck open, an initial contributor to the meltdown. It would eventually have eaten its way through the bottom of the pressure vessel. And from then on, all bets are off. It's kind of like you're beyond anything that's been studied. The image of the disaster would continue to linger in the 70 nuclear reactors that already dotted the landscape. Not all the promotion in the world can erase memories of central Pennsylvania as the place where the worst fear of modern man almost came to pass. There was an anti-nuclear movement before Three Mile Island, but now it has a new following. The cleanup after the accident took more than a decade and cost almost $1 billion. And despite a host of reforms to shore up nuclear safety, the lesson to many seemed clear. Nuclear power is dead as an industry in the United States. It died at Three Mile Island. Three Mile Island looks so long ago to millennials. It's sort of something that your parents talk about and worry about. And I remember the Saturday Night Live skit where Jimmy Carter goes into the reactor to try to save it. Mr. President, you're glowing. Jimmy! Don't touch me. I'm a nuclear engineer and I'm pretty worried right now. He turns into this gigantic, radiated man. This experience has not changed my commitment to nuclear power. And it all seems sort of exaggerated. One government study estimated in such an event, 45,000 would be killed, a quarter of a million injured. If it would have melted down, it would have probably have wiped out the entire eastern seaboard. It all just sort of seemed way blown out of proportion. This fear-mongering... Michael Schellenberger is among a new wave of environmentalists who began to gain prominence over the last decade. Their views, recently featured in the film Pandora's Promise, are strikingly different from the types that led the news in 1979. But I think it's fair to say that the concerns that young environmentalists have are overwhelmingly around living in a hotter world and that those pretty seriously outweigh their concerns around nuclear. The idea that you can power a world of 9 billion people, all of whom are going to live energy-rich lives on just solar and wind, is a delusion. And it's a dangerous delusion. In 2010, support widened for nuclear power. 
Nuclear energy remains our largest source of fuel that produces no carbon emissions. President Obama announced roughly $8 billion in loan guarantees to break ground on the first new American nuclear plant in three decades. To break through from this 30-year slump, but we're really talking about a nuclear renaissance. Although it continued to confront economic headwinds, such as cheap natural gas, the industry weathered expensive safety improvements, pushed plant performance, and developed a host of new theoretical designs that promised a bright future for a power-hungry public. Then, in 2011... First an earthquake, then a tsunami, and then a nuclear disaster. The Japanese government now says two reactors are in partial meltdown and four more are at risk. Galinsky had been raising concerns about nuclear power since Three Mile Island and the disaster at Fukushima, which culminated in a series of hydrogen explosions, three simultaneous reactor meltdowns, and a substantial release of radiation heightened that unease. Chernobyl was pretty much dismissed here because it was not U.S. technology. Then you get to Fukushima, it is U.S. technology, and that's, that's a big problem. It's triple three mile island squared. Before the meltdown in Japan, American support for nuclear power as an alternative to fossil fuels had reached a new high. But that support appears to be evaporating quickly. Fukushima showed that when radiation gets out, you may have a certain amount of land that's off limit effectively forever. And the economic impact is enormous. Nuclear energy is still confronting the same issues that have dogged it for decades, from investment capital to worries about nuclear waste. But scientists continue to push boundaries in search for new ways to deal with our constantly growing energy needs. Thorium is a naturally occurring nuclear fuel. It's so energy dense that you can hold a lifetime supply of thorium energy in the palm of your hand. In a normal nuclear reactor, you take an atom and then split it. What they're going to do here is taking pairs of atoms and then forcing or fusing them together. There is no good source of energy. The only thing that's worse than not having nuclear energy or coal-fired energy is not having energy at all. You have to step back. It is the first major new energy source is fire. It is an impressive thing. The question is, is it good enough? Do we need it now? And do we want this technology? <laughs> 